he's been racing really well, Gavin. I know uh, you've probably had a couple of uh, contests against his horse, uh, but certainly he's a very capable horse. He's run some excellent races, and good to see him uh, saluting for Wayne Potter and the team. Yeah, no, true. He deserved that win, and I mean, he didn't get it cheap. Uh, had to earn the lead early, and then there wasn't much respite during, uh, you know, the middle section. If you know, it's okay running quick lead times as long as you can get a, you know, come up for air in the middle. But that didn't sort of happen, and. Uh, I mean, the other horse was wide out on the track and this guy probably needs a horse beside him just to uh, keep him going to the line. And uh, But, I mean, he did a good job. He uh, And as we say, he deserved the win. He certainly did. And uh, as you mentioned, he's run some uh, excellent races. And I was a little bit surprised when I saw the lead time of 44. It was a little bit quicker than I thought it would be. Yeah, I suppose first race, you know, uh, the track's going to be in pretty good order for the... And, um, yeah, I, w I was too, actually, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, they did make me earn it. I must admit, Kate, I was down the back, I was looking at the sectional times, I thought, well, you're just going to get beat here, uh, you just can't keep going, and it did look that way coming to the home turn, and uh, to this horse's credit, uh, she dug super deep. Yeah, she did. Um, I don't, um, you know, obviously I haven't driven her before, but um, she she ran that so easy, the first race, the first couple of races here, off and quick, and... I'm surprised at that time because she was doing it so well in the run and I had a nice hold of her and she was just strolling along and um, and then, yeah, I thought, you know, half around the corner when that one got to me quick, um, sort of a bit worried, but up the straight I could sort of sense that she was just kicking back and she just kept kept going at that pace and, um, yeah, really solid time, so, yeah, good. Yeah, fantastic and we've seen uh, this horse put up some really good performances leading into uh, tonight's race, but coming back to the 1700, uh, the short course really helped her and, as you mentioned, uh, she was super tough. Yeah, you know, she was way down in class, wasn't she, on which, what the horses she'd been racing. Um, but, you know, to come out and, and go that time, um, yeah, it's really good. And I'd like to thank Shannon for the opportunity to drive her. Um, it's always good when you can um, pick up some, you know, quality horses. And, um, yeah, it's been really good. Now to join now, uh, past uh, champ in the... Chris Elford, having uh, finished off the season uh, in great fashion, you've got some challenges so far this season, Chris. There's been three races down and uh, there's two other drivers that have driven as many winners as you. Yeah, well, you know, uh, hopefully we can pick up the pace a bit more later. Uh, well, uh, you've gone pretty close uh, earlier on. A good win by this old horse uh, with Gusto. He's uh, a 10-year-old. He's been uh, quite a uh, remarkable horse. That was his... Uh, 17th win from uh, 118 starts. He's run quite a lot of placings, but he's been racing in really good form. He was beaten by Metro Mike last start after leading, and he was just run down tonight. Um, had to work hard for that first 150 metres. It didn't uh, get everything his own way, but once you were able to find that uh, lead, you were able to get a bit of a breather, and he certainly... Uh, sometimes it gives you an impression he gets off the bit, but he does respond, as we know. Yeah, well, he... Um, look, you know, the first 100 was real quick, and then... Uh, even though the first quarter was only 30, we did burn up, you know, early and got that breather and, um, you know, probably 27 threes as fast as he can go. But um, if he went a bit harder through the middle, you know, he'd still run 27 threes. So it was good that he had a nice win tonight. Good run, uh, Major Kiwi. Well done to Robert Caruso. We're going to catch up with Rob in a few moments' time. Uh, able to uh, get into a good spot. He seemed to be travelling well. He got off the bit of it coming to the home turn, but once he wound up, he finished off well. Yeah, it worked out really well, being able to slot in behind the leader. and um, They wound the pace up and just sort of dropped him for one stride, but um, once he got the sprint lane, he really sprinted well. He's been a, a lovely horse. That was his 210th race start, uh, 30 wins. Yeah, I couldn't, couldn't tell you... Um, any of them, but he did a great job tonight and uh, happy I got to drive him. And you've had a yeah, good little uh, affinity with Rob, uh, driven for him before? Yeah, he brings them over this time, you know, uh, most years and um, yeah, we had a little bit of luck along the way and uh, hope it continues. Well done, uh, this horse here. Obviously, had a few little concerns. You weren't too happy the way he finished off last week or last start and was able to bounce back pretty well. There was plenty of people wanting to lay him tonight and think he might get beat, but uh, he travelled strong and he, he ran well. He did, Rob. You know, he's a funny horse and he was on song tonight and um, 
you know, sort of solid enough lead time, copped a bit of pressure, but was still able to get to the line really strong. So, um, yeah, couldn't be happier. Is it uh, a physical issue with him to have him spot on or just mentally, uh, just whether he's uh, in the mood? Just mental, if only he could speak English. Um, but, yeah, he works good at home all the time pretty much. But sometimes when he comes here, he just he doesn't go bad, but he's not sharp and he just doesn't go his best because his best is quite good. So, um, yeah. I watched him in the prelims. He's a pretty relaxed customer. He is really relaxed, actually. Um, yeah, when we got him from New Zealand, he was pretty relaxed. And normally they get a little bit... Um, after we have him for a little bit, they can get on the bit. But he's pretty good, but he travelled well in the run then, which was always a good sign. Last week he didn't travel at all and um, sort of ran that way. Yeah, it was sort of pretty even tempo. You sort of made sure it was just a more of a Dow-type finish and uh, and that's exactly how way it panned out for him. Yeah, the cheap quarter up the back helped. After the run, we'd got in front with a little bit of pressure and um, it just meant he was able to out-sprint the rest. A top win tonight, Gav. Yeah, no, true, Rob. Um, as we know, uh, you go out on a on a high and uh, you come back, and it's very hard to come back at that level. So, uh, yeah, as you say, his record um, speaks for itself. And tonight, third up, he was yeah really strong at the finish. So, uh, yeah, all goes, everything all goes well going forward. There was uh, well a lot of tempo on early. You would have probably uh, enjoyed watching that unfold uh, out in the lead and. Obviously, Mike Tribeca then was able to uh, pop around and, and find a lead comfortably, but uh, you made your move and you knew you had the class horse uh, to sit outside Mike Tribeca. And, and I suppose you always worry, uh, you know, a horse that's been off the scene for a long time. You were second up at uh, last start and tonight you really wanted to see him uh, take that next step, which he did that. Yeah, quite true. Um, last week I was sort of wide early and <clears throat> then when the, the winner came wide, I sort of... I've done my share of work to get forward and I didn't want to press on with him with all that in mind, that he was sort of fresh up and that. And uh, I think um, tonight showed the benefit of that. Yeah, for sure. And second up, always they can be a little bit more vulnerable. Just on this horse, I mean, obviously taking into account everything stays uh, healthy and, and, and well. I mean, going into an Inter-Dominion Carnival uh, at the end of this uh, year, you would imagine this horse is right up to it. Yeah, I would think so. Um, I mean, the trotting ranks overall are, are very strong, but maybe at the top level, they're not what uh, we've come used to in years gone by. And I'm speaking, um, you know, Australasia, New Zealand as well. Uh, they're not, uh, there's no outstanding horse. So, uh, yes, I'm sure that uh, this horse has uh, showcased his talents enough in the past. He can leave the mobile good. He's a good race horse. So, uh, you know, with a bit of grounding now at um, at the open cast level, uh, a bit of a break come again, um, you know, during November uh, for that sort of series. I, Yeah, I wouldn't uh, discount his chances of being the winner. You've probably been called a lot of names over the years, but uh, have you ever been called David Copperfield before? Uh, no, I can't believe I have, no. <laughs> well, uh, it was a Houdini act at its best. Uh, no surprise that uh, you didn't come out. Obviously, they'd gone so uh, slow at uh, the tempo. It was always going to make it pretty hard. And even a horse like Magical Man and that pulling to the outside, you knew uh, when you're out wide at Melton uh, in a slow tempo run race and it was a dash up the straight, uh, it's always going to make it pretty difficult to make ground out wide. You decided to chance the arm and go between them and you could just see the uh, heavens were starting to open up half up the straight and to the credit of this girl and look, she's been amazing uh, for where she's come from. Dean uh, deserves an uh, enormous amount of accolades for his training and a real credit to this horse because it takes a great horse to be able to uh, get itself off the canvas and win a race like that. Uh, no doubt about that Rob, yes. Uh, the tempo of the race was really against anything from the back in the field to run on so uh, yeah I sort of bit the bullet and stayed and stayed and uh, the sprint lane's been extended now so um, the one horse sort of shifted into it and uh, that sort of gave me a, a clear passage straight through the middle so uh, I know how well this one's been going so it was only I mean I know I was giving you know nice horses a couple of lengths start but she's uh, really in the zone this one at the moment and uh, yeah she did the rest. 
You, you mentioned a sprint lane. I mean, it's obviously been uh, a, a, a measure of debate uh, as far as the, the length of the sprint lane at different stages. I mean, personally, I like it the way it is right now. Uh, it certainly gives horses like yourself uh, that opportunity when it does open up uh, to, to, to get a wind up and give yourself every chance. Uh, your thoughts as a driver? Well, yeah, no, I uh, concur with what you say tonight in this race, but um, from a driver's point of view, if you're trailing the leader with the sprint lane the way it is now, you will more times, 99 times out of 100, you will stay and wait for the sprint lane. Uh, in the past, when uh, it was some 25 metres shorter, if you're in the sprint lane, if you're in that position behind the leader and you had to make a decision on the apex of the bend, you would more times than not go to the outside. So in effect then what happens is the horses through the fence, for the fence, um, they all of a sudden get an opportunity, uh, whereas at the moment they're going to get held up. And I mean, you see Wingatui Jew, I sat through the fence before, uh, didn't get... I mean, the horse I trailed, which ran second, uh, I didn't get the run until the last 50 and I only run third. Uh, but in, like I say, in the past when it was shorter, the driver beyond the leader had to make a decision. Now they don't, they just wait for it. So uh, I was brought up without sprint lanes and I uh, still believe that uh, racing would be far superior without sprint lanes because the good drivers would come to the fore, the good horses would come to the fore and... Uh, yeah, I think there's a place for no sprint lanes still. Sneaky Kate, you forgot to talk about this one earlier on. Uh, you kept that one to yourself, Kate. It actually went well last week in the, uh, in the race he was in last week and um, went really well, but I still didn't think from the second row draw that, it would, uh, that he'd win, but um, it's not entirely surprising. Well, uh, I could see him winding up. I think Dan picked him up uh, as you came to the outside and you thought to yourself, well, one thing you knew, he was going to come hard and he was going to come late because he, uh, he's pretty uh, dour and he, he certainly doesn't know how to shirk an issue. Yeah, no, that's right. He loves, um, finds the line really good and... Uh a bit worrying when uh, you and Nick got through late, but um, we managed to hold on. Yeah, it was pretty close at the finish, but he uh, he did a good job. And he's raced really well. He's uh, he's got a lot of talent, this horse, and I think he's still uh, still uh, maturing and getting a bit better. Yeah, he, most of his early racing was stands, and the mobile sort of set him off a little bit. But um, you, did, you know, I thought maybe the stands suit him more. But he's um, he's proven that he's slowly getting there, and he's so lightly raced that he really hasn't. He's done a good job to win tonight because he really hasn't had, you know, much racing, um, you know, this grade and the conditioning. So, um, yeah, really happy with him. Well, what you've got to like about him, his physique, he's a big, strong horse. And as you mentioned, he's only had 18 starts. And, you know, looking at him, you, you can see him just maturing more and more over the next season or two. And there's probably more to come. Yeah, you know, you'd think so. But uh, he has to as well because it only gets harder from here. But, um, yeah, we've um, certainly had fun so far. So hopefully it continues. Good on you, uh, Dave. Uh, cold uh, weather in Ballarat hasn't stopped you winning at Melton tonight. No, uh, yeah, they must love the frosty mornings, Rob, because they're not going bad at the minute. <laughs> oh, well, well done. Good to see this horse winning. Alan Foe, uh, one of your uh, devoted owners, he's here somewhere. Uh, he's been a lovely uh, trotter, uh, always uh, had good ability, always run well, uh, finds a bit of trouble from time to time, but he enjoyed a beautiful trip tonight. Yeah, he's, um, oh, you know, Two-year-old, he was a bit of a rat bag. He, he, he sort of didn't trot a lot of the times. But ever since then, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's six today. So he's had sort of uh, three three good seasons where he's been very honest. He's earned, a, you know, between the twenty and 30000 every year. So he's, he's paying his way and he's a bit of fun for Al, yeah. No, fantastic. And uh, came out of the gate well. Uh, I'm a menace, beat you out. But you were quite happy to sit behind and it gave you a great trip. I would have preferred to lead. He runs his best races in front, but he... Probably didn't begin as quick as he normally does, but uh, but then uh, you know after that, um, Alan's also I'm a menace done done its job, got me to the sprint lane, which uh, you know, and he was good enough to get by it up the lane. He's been uh, nicknamed David Copperfield tonight. He's been able to. Uh, Put up another big performance to get up uh, right on the line. I think you deserve a holiday after that performance tonight, Gav. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you hit the nail right on the head there. Uh, Megan and I are off tomorrow, uh, Singapore for a couple of days, and then, uh, 
yeah, to the tea capital of the world, Sri Lanka. So a uh, bit of Dilma tea. I'll be <laughs> doing a bit of a uh, bit of saluting. Uh, well, you're uh, you're a bit of a uh, tour man, aren't you? You've uh, you went uh, chasing the lions in Africa uh, not long ago, and uh, now you're uh, trying an another continent. Yeah, no, and uh, they sort of we've done a little bit of homework on it, and they sort of it's sort of been called the eighth wonder of the world for because. Uh, one end of the country, extreme wealth, and then the other end of the country, extreme poverty. So uh, we're going to, uh, yeah, we're going to explore it all and uh, see what it's like. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll enjoy it. I look forward to uh, the Gavin Lang uh, tour uh, report when you get back. Uh, well done uh, tonight. Fantastic uh, effort, four winners. And Good to see this horse winning. It looked a good race for him. Uh, mind you, he had to work a little bit extra harder to make up the ground because uh, the Sultan fell around a pretty cheeky race. Yeah, no, too true. Um, you know, the, the claiming ranks are pretty strong and this series is a uh, couple of mates with a $20,000 final. So you uh, more times than not get some, um, you know, some horses that are good enough to win it. I mean, this horse third in an MO last week so uh, like I say he's good enough to win an MO yet he's going around in a claiming series so uh, yeah he was good tonight uh, but like I say a uh, deserved winner. Vincent shoots clear now is this a star on the rise? Vincent brains them. Vincent by 15. How big was that, Vincent? That was outstanding. Heaven Rock tight and better. It's an all-star show in the Auckland Cup. And Vincent, Vincent too good. 